Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and uh, yes uh, I'm back and uh, with the chapter 2 of class 9 that is uh, types of hardware. So without wasting any further time let's begin. So types of hardware now always we have heard the word hardware and uh, very often you know you might have come across with the definition of a hardware. So what is a hardware? And uh, the, you know, the standard answer that we get is uh, the hardware refers to the devices which we can see and can touch, isn't it? So hardware is basically, okay, in computers, basically the machine that we refer to. So when we talk about a hardware, so it means that, this is what it means, that this is a computer in front of you, isn't it? So this is a computer and this is a hardware. You can touch this computer, you can lift this computer right from one place to another. So that's the digital hardware in front of you. What is the software? And now the word comes software. So what exactly is the software? So as you can see in this particular picture that uh, this is an Apple uh, computer and uh, this is a hardware that you're looking at. So there is a monitor and there is a CPU in build and uh, there is a keyboard, there's a mouse. So all that is hardware. So when we talk about a software that what you see in the screen is basically the software. As you know that a computer requires a software to make the machine work, right? So hardware, okay, if you want to use this machine, if you want to use the hardware, so you need to install the software. You need to install the OS, the Windows. This is what normally we install, that's the Windows OS. Without installing the OS or without installing the operating system or the software we cannot use this machine right so if you really want to use this hardware we have to install the software and the software is the things that you see in the screen basically through the monitor so what you see over here in the monitor is basically the GUI look that the software has basically and uh, that is the software part so this machine functions with the help of the software. So the hardware functions with the help of the software. So if there is no software, there is no use of this hardware. So it's like, you know, a gun without a bullet. I have a very good gun with me, but if I do not have the bullets, what's the use of the gun? It's of no use to me. Similarly, hardware without the software has no meaning. So that is the difference between a hardware and a software. So let's move further. So this is called as the motherboard. Now where exactly is this? So normally if you have a desktop computer and you have a monitor and a CPU separate. So normally we have uh, all-in-one PCs nowadays. But uh, if you talk about you know the computers which has a monitor and a CPU. So normally if you open that cpu now when i say cpu it's not exactly a cpu it's a cpu cabinet right that's the normally a box so we can open that inside that cpu cabinet what you will find is the motherboard now this is the motherboard and this is how the motherboard looks like so on this motherboard what happens is all the devices are connected through this motherboard Okay, everything gets connected through this motherboard. So there is a processor like over here, then the RAM gets installed over here. There is a fan to make the machine, keep the machine cool. So everything is, you know, onto this motherboard. The, uh, the memory, that is the RAM gets installed. The hard disk is getting connected through the motherboard. And then there are, you know, the connecting wires, which we call the bus, which, you know, circuits basically which uh, connects the, these devices together okay so that's a motherboard so when you open the cpu cabinet what you see inside is kind of a, this kind of picture that you would normally see this is the motherboard which on which everything is connected the processor which is actually the computer the cpu and uh, the memory the hard disk 
right everything is connected through this motherboard this is so so important so anything goes wrong with the motherboard uh, trust me your computer will not work will not function properly because everything is connected through the motherboard so anything goes wrong with the motherboard then there has to be some problem with the system okay so that's about the motherboard and this is what this is also a hardware that's the motherboard in inside the cpu cabinet then comes the most important thing in a computer and that is your cpu and this is the the cpu this is how your cpu looks this is the processor okay this is your main computer that is the microprocessor chip and this is how it looks so when i talk about okay i have a i3 processor or a i5 processor i7 processor so basically i am referring to this particular chip which is the main computer this is your main cpu that's a chip okay so this is how a chip looks like this is your main computer rest everything is connected to this cpu everything is you know the action that takes place in your computer this is the microprocessor chip that makes the decision now when we always talk about what is a cpu and right from the lower classes you might have heard the standard definition that the cpu is basically the brain of the computer and this is what we talk about why it is considered the brain of the computer because that's the main computer that's the main microprocessor chip when i say i3 i5 i7 so basically i'm referring to the cpu to the microprocessor okay so let me take this example one more hardware that is the hard disk and this is how your hard disk looks like that's a external device which we call it as a secondary storage device okay so then we have the ram and the rom that is also installed in your system and also the ram and rom are attached through the motherboard please understand all the devices are attached through the motherboard even the cpu is attached to your motherboard then when we talk about the hardware so hardware basically they comprise of the cpu which is the main computer the memory now there are two types of memory and never get confused about it two types of memory the first is the primary memory and the second is the secondary memory i just spoke about the secondary memory and the memory that i spoke about was the hard disk okay so let me just collect about the information about the primary memory so what exactly is a primary memory so there are two types of primary memory that is ram and rom which we just i showed the pictures to you why we require a ram in my previous video i have told you that ram is required there is no ram your computer will not function every program that you run in fact i am running this powerpoint presentation in front of you so this particular program is right now loaded onto the ram with the help of the ram i can run the program if there is no ram i cannot run the programs please understand so ram is so so important right and but yes ram is a volatile memory now the word volatile what exactly volatile means that ram is a pretty fast memory but it can hold the data okay it can hold the data only when there is a power supply till the point your computer is on till the point there is a power supply to your machine this ram can hold the data now which data we normally talk about we're not talking about the some kind of you know user data normally yes user data can be also there but normally these are programs that you know are executing and who execute them the cpu executes them okay i'm going to talk about that in just few moments and then we require a rom even without a rom the function of the computer will not happen because rom is important whenever we start the computer so it helps the computer to boot so for the booting process we require a rom so rom is just a very small chip which is a memory chip which is only a read only memory so the data it doesn't get loaded onto a rom 
okay we never load any kind of data we don't do any kind of writing onto the rom rom is only used for reading the data now what kind of data is there on the rom it has some startup instructions which helps your computer to start okay so ram is required for program execution okay so if you start a video game so that is also a program which gets loaded onto the ram and then the execution of that video game will take place in fact the video game will start playing so normally if you really want to play some high definition uh, video game so two things that you require two very important things that you require they always talk about you know that there should be a graphic cards because that supports the video game and second that the ram should be of a higher capacity so why we always talk about the ram should be of higher capacity is because if the program is a huge program and uh, so to make that program to run smoothly we require a high capacity ram so you cannot you know run high uh, definition video games with a 1 gb or a 2 gb ram we require at least 8 gb or 16 gb ram so that the video game plays quite nicely okay so this is about the ram and the rom and these two memories are considered as the primary memory these are the main memory okay next is the secondary memory and these are the external devices that we can attach by default of course your computer comes with a external device and that is called as your hard disk which is used for storing your data right so where do you store all your music files the video files everything you store on your hard disk right and uh, most probably you're going to have two drives minimum two drives on your hard disk the first drive that we have is the c colon and the second we have is the d colon or e colon or whatever it is okay and normally if you see that your hardware engineer might tell you that do not store any user data on to the c drive store it on the other drive why does it why does the hardware engineer normally suggest you that because if anything goes wrong with your os if your os gets corrupted then only the c drive will get formatted okay and since you have kept all your data on to the d drive so your data will be safe over there so anything goes wrong with your os and it requires a reinstallation then the c drive will be formatted and since it will get formatted your data will get lost so it's better that you do not store any of your important files onto the c colon it is only used c colon c colon is basically only used for programs the only the programs are stored over there the os resides on the c colon right so that is all about the hard disk children then we have external devices like pen drive cd dvd you might have come across these words and uh, these are all external devices now what is exactly the difference between a primary memory and a secondary memory now please understand primary memories these are like you know if you talk about ram basically okay out of a primary memory i will talk about ram and ram is a volatile memory okay but if you talk about the secondary memories that is the hard disk the pen drive the cd the dvd these are non volatile memory okay now why they are non volatile now they are non volatile because what happens is when you store the data on your hard disk okay now your hard disk is installed in your uh, the in, inside your computer in a way right so what happens you do your work and then you switch off you shut down your system now there is no power supply so what do you feel is your data still present in the hard disk yes it is present in your hard disk and that is why hard disk or the external devices are normally called as non volatile because even if there is no power supply the data is still present in the memory so if you talk about a pen drive so i can take a pen drive you know plug it in the into the usb port and then i can copy some data and then i can remove the pen drive and keep it in my pocket right so what do you feel is the data present in the pen drive of course it is present right that is the reason why it is called as non volatile because even if there is no power supply to the pen drive the data is present in the pen drive but the same case is not with the ram ram is a non volatile 
only when there is a power supply the data will be present the moment there is no power supply the system gets shut down the ram the data from the ram will get erased automatically okay so that is the major difference between a ram and the secondary devices and if you talk about rom rom is a primary memory but even rom is not a volatile it is a non volatile memory why i will tell you why because there are certain startup instructions that are permanently stored and on rom as i said earlier that rom is required to make your system start for booting your system so there has to be a program which should be permanently stored in the rom so the the program is always present in the rom even if there is no power supply and that is a reason why rom is a non volatile okay so ram is volatile rom is a non volatile and secondary memories are anyway non volatile memory okay so this is the thing children that you should be everybody of you should be knowing about it and then we have some input devices and the output devices right from the childhood we have come across with this okay these are the input devices like keyboard mouse by which we can give some input to the system then there are output devices like the monitor the printer the speakers these are the output devices and these are like very easy to understand okay but the main thing to understand is about this that is a primary memory what exactly is a primary memory in future maybe you know you can go for an interview and simple questions can be asked to you or sometimes they can ask you whether ram is volatile or rom is volatile you know some kind of confusing questions can come across so in that case you should be knowing this okay so that is the difference between a primary memory difference between a ram and rom difference between a primary memory and the secondary memory now if you talk about you know that the cpu is the brain of the computer right the brain of the computer cpu is considered as the brain okay so why it is considered as a brain of the computer and the example that i took for this is you know the human body So now you can see the human body and there are so many you know internal as well as external parts of the human body so these are basically the internal parts which are very much required do we require the lungs of course we require lungs do we require the pancreas of course we require a pancreas do we require a liver definitely a stomach of course right so is there any part that you feel that is of no use there is no such part right all these parts are extremely important for our human body but can you tell me which is the which part of uh, that has been shown out here that is the most important is it the lungs the pancreas the small intestine the heart heart is very important but all these body parts has no meaning if there is no brain because everything works through the brain the brain controls everything the brain controls your their your entire body isn't it so brain is the most important thing if something goes wrong with the brain all these things will not function properly similarly your cpu that is the microprocessor chip is the most important thing in your computer of course we require a keyboard of, of course we require a monitor we require a mouse we require a motherboard we require all other hardware parts we require the ram but the most important is the microprocessor chip because that's the main computer so i've just taken the same example because that's the definition that we keep on learning that you know Yeah, the cpu is the brain of the computer and this is how it is i just have explained it to you now the cpu has what the cpu has you know i mean the cpu controls all this basically ram rom the hard disks the motherboard the input devices output devices everything is controlled by the cpu okay so 
I know, and if you talk about the motherboard, so I said, okay, motherboard is also very important because it connects all the devices together. Similarly, if you talk about talk about our body, you know, our body is connected by veins, by blood and all that things, you know, that actually makes our body function. But still, the most important is the brain. Unless and until the brain does not function properly, your body will not function properly, right? So motherboard is, yes, everything is connected through the motherboard. Just like in human body, I said, through the muscles, to the veins, to the, the skeleton that we have, everything gets connected. But ultimately, is your brain that matters the most. So what happens is, as I said, the RAM is a volatile memory. So, you know, this is a CPU, which is the brain of the computer. And this is a hard disk. Now, what happens is whenever you start a new program, for example, you just want to play a video game and you double click onto the icon. What happens is the copy of that video game will be picked from the hard disk because hard disk is a place where all the program files, the user files, everything is stored on your hard disk. And as I said, most probably all the program files reside in the C colon. So what happens is when you request, so it's a kind of a request basically that you send to the CPU that I want to play a video game. And so you double click onto the icon. And what happens? What happens after that is the copy of that video game will be picked from the hard disk and will be loaded onto the RAM. And who does this? Actually, this has been done by the OS. OS does this, you know, executes this request basically. So data from the hard disk, the copy of that particular program will be picked from the hard disk and it goes onto the RAM. Once it gets loaded onto the RAM, once it is there in the RAM, what happens is, you know, the CPU will take instructions, it will fetch the instructions from that particular program and will decode it. Decode means it is going to execute the instructions. Okay, so, you know, between the CPU and the hard disk, we have this RAM. Now the question, you, you know, you might have come across the question that if RAM is a memory and even hard disk is a memory, though this is volatile and this is non-volatile, why do we require a RAM? Why can't we just, you know, execute everything from the hard disk? Isn't it? That's logically, maybe you're right, but practically not possible. And that is not possible because RAM is an extremely fast memory though it is volatile memory but it is a fast memory and that's the purpose of a ram hard disk is a very complex hardware hard disk is an extremely complex hardware so what happens is this is extremely slow as compared to the ram so reading and writing from the hard disk it is going to take a lot of time so your system will work pretty slow. So there is no meaning of just, you know, executing the programs from the hard disk. Now hard disk like we have around one TB hard disk normally that we have nowadays in the market. And RAM we have around, if you talk about good RAM, maybe 8 GB is good. Depends on the kind of software that you use or 16 GB is good or 32 GB. And this is one TB. This is a huge capacity, but still hard disk cannot be used for program execution in fact there is a situation where a hard disk is used for the program execution and that is a virtual memory concept that is a different concept it is uh, not the part of this particular chapter so i won't talk about it but yes there is a possibility and sometimes the os does make use of the hard disk as the secondary option for ram it does that okay but uh, that situation arises only when the ram is completely filled up when there are a lot of program running in the ram only then this question of uh, virtual memory arises okay and then this is bus oh i bus why bus because these are circuit lines these are the buses which carry the data from one place to another so these are circuits basic basically to carry the data Okay, and so we require these circuits, circuit lines. And then there is a ROM which is also attached to the CPU because, uh, you know, when we start the computer, okay, then that ROM data is going to get loaded onto the, the OS basically gets loaded onto the RAM. And then, you know, the CPU is going to decode that, is going to execute that, and then the window starts. 
okay i'm going to explain this uh, one more time in one of my upcoming video how exactly it does that if you really want to uh, learn deep about it okay so this is the most important diagram i would say that you should remember for this particular chapter and the concepts of primary memory and secondary memory and why cpu is the brain of the computer that is the most important part of this chapter that you should be focusing on and you do not have to buy at anything you just have to make your concepts clear the next is secondary storages now just I will just go through this. This is pretty straightforward and pretty theoretical. So we have floppy disks and the hard disks. Now I do not know why they always include floppy disks. This is something that maybe if you are a student of class 9, uh, I don't think you have ever seen a floppy disk because that was a very old device maybe 20 years ago that we had and it was a very old device and the storage capacity of the floppy disk is 1.44 MB and I don't I have no idea why they actually include this floppy disk into the syllabus but still it is just a small introduction to the floppy disk now comes the second storage is the hard disk as you know hard disk they have a circular plates with spins okay now this is theoretical right i'm going to explain you this what exactly is a hard disk and how it functions it has always been said that it has a circular you know plates or platters which spins and uh, platters have tracks tracks are divided into sectors and uh, these are not selected it is sectors and sectors are divided into blocks okay and uh, platters are coated with magnetic material and uh, this is you know magnetic material which helps to retain the data even when there is no power supply now let me just explain more about the hard disk with the help of the diagram now what happens is the hard disk is not just one circular disk just like a cd or a dvd in fact there are uh, you know there are more than one desk that are stacked one above the other okay just like this now this is not that much of distance that they have shown in this figure we don't have that much of distance it is very minute distance that we have but uh, just to make you understand this is the figure that we have the diagram so there are more than one platters that are stacked one above the other and then there is a you know a circular arm and there is a read write head read write head of the circular of that arm okay which kind of goes forward and backward and they kind of read the data from the hard disk and what happens is these platters are constantly spinning and there is a spindle motor at the bottom the spindle motor keeps on running keeps on spinning and this hard disk also spins along with that motor and then this arm which has a read write right head it just goes forward and backward and the data is read from the hard disk or the data has been written onto the hard disk to write the data okay and please understand that this is a platter and the platter is basically you know there are tracks so this is the circles over here one two three four these are all tracks the tracks are divided into sectors so this is one sector this is another sector the third the fourth and again that sector is divided into blocks and these blocks are nothing but your memory blocks these are also called as offsets okay so this is how your hard disk functions and even this is the you know important part of the chapter that how exactly your hard disk works you can just google around and come across uh, some other figures of it but this is the best figure that i found so i'm showing it to you so that was all about the hard disk and then we have the other hard disk like the cd which is called as the compact disk so cd is an optical media okay now the word is optical and over here this was a magnetic media so this is a magnetic media that is a hard disk and cd is an optical media the difference between a you know a magnetic media is that you know the data uh, gets stored that is a with the magnetic effect that it has and the optical media basically is through the razor 
uh, through the laser i mean to say okay so the data gets stored in a different way basically so that's the optical media and the cd is having the capacity of around 700 mb cd rom there are many versions of it so cd rom means read only memory so when you buy a cd if you buy a software through a cd so we can only install that software but then we cannot use that cd to write something onto it right you might purchase a cd which has a software and then you can install that software but then i cannot use that cd as to store my data onto it so that is only for reading purpose so that is read only memory and then there is a recordable recordable means once we write the data that's it and next time we cannot write the data onto it we can only write data only once okay and then there is something called a cd rw this is rewritable we can read the data as well as we can write the data onto this similarly we have for the dvd which it which stands for digital versatile disk so a, D, a dvd is also an optical media but stores data up to 17 gb and a dvd rom the same thing that is read only memory so maybe you have purchased maybe some time not recently but it is not possible that you might have purchased a dvd and there is a movie into that right so normally that movie there is a data into, into that dvd and it is only read only memory so i cannot just delete that movie and i can store my data that is not possible okay then there is dvd r which is recordable i can write the data only once and then there is dvd rw which is used for reading and writing but we normally do not use cds and dvds for storing data because we have uh, pen drives right so before i talk about pen drives there is something called as blu ray disc and this is also a dvd but has the capacity of 50 gb around 50 gb and normally it is used for storing high definition movies and it uses the blu ray technology so that is about the blu ray disc and then we have the most popular device that is a pen drive and this is so easy to use the most important part of this is you know about the pen drive is it is easy to use just plug in into the usb port copy the data read the data extremely easy and uh, there is a high capacity pen drives that are like up to 512 gb pen drive normally this is what you get in the market okay and that is all about the pen drive you have been using it definitely you are using it and then children just very quickly i will talk about the input devices and the output devices so input devices we have the keyboard the mouse the microphone the scanner the touch screen right your mobile has a touch screen so even that is a input you do something and that takes you no know, you swipe you you click on to something through the mobile so even that is a input and then there is a barcode reader everybody knows barcode reader everybody goes to a shopping mall so obviously there is a barcode reader which scans the price of the product and then your bill gets generated and that is a magnetic stripe reader this is something that normally is used for reading the data from your your uh, credit card or debit card right so nowadays uh, for making the payment also you have this uh, machine which swipes that card and then your amount gets deducted so that is a magnetic stripe reader and then we have some of the output devices like the monitor the printer the speaker the plotter and the projector i guess i do not really need to talk about it other than the plotter which is used for plotting some some kind of uh, figures for engineering purpose on a very large sheet basically and projector i guess everybody knows what is a projector so we want to project the monitor onto a surface so which makes it as a very big uh, visible to everyone so we require a projector for that 
so that's about the input devices and the output devices and this is all that you need to know about this particular chapter now i know that there are types of monitor printers but yes you can just remember a definition for every of the output devices and the input devices but as i said the most important part for me as a teacher what i feel is this okay what does the hardware comprise of and the memory the primary memory the secondary memory then about this particular figure okay this should be very much clear to you so what i'm going to do that i'm going to you know come up with the notes for this particular chapter and very soon i'll be launching my uh, website it is yet in the process and then that particular link i'm going to share it with you all so you can click you can go to my website and you can take down the notes so that is all that we have in this particular chapter hope you have enjoyed this particular video because education if you really take interest if the concepts are clear then you enjoy it definitely so now what i'm going to do is every week we are going to have one chapter of the book from the book for as per the syllabus of the cbse okay so maybe next week we are going to come up with the next chapter so stay tuned for that that's it for today bye for now